Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Fury Movie Thoughts. I want to start with the start because just this, just this, I don't know, solemn, quiet, silent image of just, you know, the, first we just see some someone on, on horseback and, you, you know, kind of see... Yeah, it, and it seems it seems quiet. It seems like nothing, you know. And he he rides up, and then we see a tank, and out bursts War Daddy, stabbing this guy several excuse me several times in the face. And then afterwards, he pets this horse, and and sends it on its way. And it just brilliantly captures this contrast between the the ugliness of the war of what war daddy has to do to other human beings to other to to and and this 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 hope of of something not so ugly and you know i mean the, with with this horse it's it's genuinely made a moment you know it 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 could have just been he he kills the guy and then sends the horse on his way. No, there's there's genuine you know this this brief little thing with you know he clearly cares about horses and you know later we also hear this story of of all the all all the horses that they they had to kill and and the the stench and just yeah and and it's just. Yeah, there's there's this real sense with War Daddy and and Norman that they they need to have something to latch onto, to hope for, to look forward to, in order to even stand it. And you know, you you might say that's part of why, at the end, you know, War Daddy does decide to, you know, try to hold out. It's it's also his his mission and and such but you know there's it's you know but this this was my home this was something i invested a lot of time and, and effort in and I, i'm not leaving it behind you know and yeah i i um i think i will deal with the the ending immediately obviously it is it loses a lot of the realism and and such of you know early you know, so suddenly these these Germans have have absolutely no strategy and you know they they get caught completely by surprise they you know sneak up on this you know tank instead of just making sure it's actually destroyed and just yeah it's it's basically it allows the all of them to have some sort of you know, last stand, basically, and like like I said in the review, they they kind of needed to have some, you know, the the ending have some grandeur. It couldn't just stop, you know, and yeah, it's it's still you know the the scenes are still very well done, but they they really don't belong in the, you know, suddenly they can take out all these guys when, yeah. I, I definitely feel that they, they should, they, they needed some, some kind of big event for that last bit. I think it would have been good if the tiger battle had been the ending. And then, you know, the, the tiger battle play out as it does in the movie, and then, you know, immediately after, I don't know. I mean, I guess maybe, you know, they they maybe maybe the 
they get taken out or something, you know. I mean, the, the way this ends with, you know, only Norman surviving and that, you know, I mean, you, you could basically have that too with just, you know, immediately after they, they take out the tank, you know, somehow their own tank gets taken out and Norman just, you know, barely survives, something like that. But just not quite this big scene of just suddenly they're able to take out all the, you know, the, these are SS. They, they, they would not just be stupidly running around aimlessly and easily taken out like that. It's, it, it gets kind of Hollywood there, but, and, and with that I do also very much want to say the tiger battle was amazing, and this is, you know, this, this could so easily have just been, like, really, you know, it, it very carefully distinguishes itself from one of these scenes where it's just, you know, it's just our heroes. They just happen to be the tank that survives. The, the tiger taking out several Shermans just that easily, that's how it was. When, when one tiger tank came upon several Shermans, it took them out just like that because it is just this, it's just a, it was a much better constructed tank. It was much more powerful and, yeah, plain and simple. And, and the thing they, they say is, is absolutely right, get around to the back because that's where it has the least amount of armor. Some, less armor on the sides than the front, but the back is where they have the least amount of armor. And you see the, the tiger also realizing that, you know, trying to back up. And this scene of tanks kind of trying to maneuver to best, you know, just so tense and, and so well done. And kind of the the tiger coming out, it's it's like a horror movie monster. It is it is this terrifying entity and just brilliantly done. I mean, I've lost count of how many times I've seen, you know, tanks do battle in, in war movies, you know, but, but here it really captures this sort of just, you know, again, we're just, we're, we're trapped in this little box with a cannon on it. You know, it's the, the the Sherman is so vulnerable, and and the Tiger is so powerful, and yet it just barely manages to to make it out. And the 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 Tiger battle scene is one of the two scenes that, I, as I mentioned in the review, two scenes that by themselves are worth watching this for. And the other is the entire scene with Emma. The, I'm um, just to, I guess I should start with just, first they, they pass this one woman on, you know, on, on the road and like, you know, Norman looks at her and then one of the others says, you know, you could have her for, what was it, a bar of chocolate, you know, or not, no, not a bar, a stick, it would be back back then, but, excuse me, and and then, you know, the other chimes in with, you know, or cigarettes, not even a whole pack, just four, and, you know, it, that that kind of sets up, I, I love how, what this, whenever they encounter women, children, or horses in this, there's, or, or, or just a mention of one of the three, that really, gets a, a certain, it sort of betrays the almost indifference of, of the, the normalcy, which is, which is such despicable, the normalcy of these grown men killing other grown men with, with weapons that, that burn and rip apart and blow up each other and the, the one thing that kind of goes, you know, the, the one thing is is one of these three perceived to be innocent, you know, women, children, and, and horses. And horses, you know, we, we have the one in the opening scene, and then, you know, the ones 
talked about when, you know, in, in the Emma scene. And, you know, with the children, I mean, you know, we, we have the Hitler Jugend that, that Norman refuses to shoot because they're, they're children and, and war daddy. I know they are, but they're going to kill us if you don't kill them first. And, and then, you know, the, the women with, you know, some, some of these comments about, you know, probably have them for just a little bit of, you know, and just, yeah, and and it kind of it all comes to a head in in the the Emma scene, with just both Norman and War Daddy need something to hope for. I already mentioned this, and it may have been in the review, but but yeah, the the they both have they have to have something to to look forward to, something that isn't soul crushing and when when they both enter this one house and you know for, first it's just you know oh there's this one woman and that you know there's there's nothing particular you know it's just don't worry we're not going to hurt you and then you know clearly you were hiding someone what you know who were you hiding and, and what you know and she goes in and and that's right you know it's it's, it's my cousin and you know the whole scene changes in mood and tension, atmosphere, so many times, so distinctly, and it's it's just it's so masterfully done right from right from right from the the two of them entering that building right up until it gets hit with the with the grenade and and the grenade you just you know you're you're sitting there and you're you're counting the tanks and it's like oh thank goodness it didn't help it didn't hit any of our guys and then you get and then you realize oh no hit the building because it's such an easy target and the the and it's and and you know the and and I, I don't remember his name, but he points out to Norma, do you think you're going to raise her from the dead? Did you did you think that there would be a positive outcome to this? And it's... And and that's kind of... That's that's what the three of them do to War Daddy and Norma. They're, they're kind of trying to say, wake up, this is not real, this is... You're, you're trying to take a break from our reality, and you can't you know it's going to end you're you're just you're just making this harder for yourself just just turn around and and go back you know they they kind of the two of them escape this oppressive claustrophobic nasty atmosphere of the tank and then when the three of them come up the the that atmosphere is recreated just now with these two poor women in the midst of it and it's just They, they, they just, they're, they are essentially trying to help Norman War Daddy. They are just, they, they realize that one way or another, this is, it's, it's not going to end well. It is not, there's, there's no happy ending in this scenario. It is just, maybe in the long run, maybe, maybe some, maybe after the war, it can be, it can, you, you know, you can find, woman and and settle down but, but you're in, you're in enemy territory this is either of you the, you or them could die any moment at just this is this is not the time for you to to let your guard down and to to be a human being because there's no room for that in war there's no room for humanity and 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 both norman and war daddy have this more, you know, on on some level, they they do believe in they they need it. Where you know, I I never remember the names, but but the 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 tall one, you know, he even says to to Norman, "You're a good person." I I don't know if we are are, good, but but you're you're good. You know, it's 
Norman still wants something positive out there. Even after he somewhat somewhat breaks and becomes more of a, you know, and becomes becomes more useful to them because he's he's more of a, a soldier. He is he is ready to kill when when he needs to. And and War Daddy, it's kind of you know, it's it's probably part of what keeps him going. I mean he you know the the, the three of the they they keep going and it's, and it's not like they're they're you know deep down they're human as well but he is the one who has to be in charge of that tank he has to lead all of these men and and not just the one tank in either so he has to have some something to ground him and it it probably is the this hope for something something better and just you know that so so returning to the 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 two of them you know yeah both both soldiers and both women up there have been you know are are all aware of of each other's presence and 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 Norman sits down at at the piano and starts playing and then then Emma sings and there's there's just this it's it's they're trying to escape they're they're trying to escape the the ugliness of the reality around them it is it is a very very sort of a, a very distinct way of, of escaping where you know War Daddy doesn't as much like do some although you know he kind of yeah you know sitting there and, and eating with you know I, I don't remember if she got a name but but Emma's cousin you know sitting there and eating, you know that's that's a minor way of, of sort of escaping but you know it yeah, the three of the others weren't exactly invited, and it's not, you know, yeah, I mean, he, he could just, you know, go and, and cook himself, or he could, you know, yeah, but, but he chooses to sit there, and, and yeah, it's almost like, you know, he's a friend dropping by, and, and she cooks, um, you know, it, but, but just the, how much it changes when when you know no, Norman is like he doesn't he doesn't want to be there no no part of him wants to be there and then he sees this piano and he can and and that's something that he used to do and and he escapes through that and then Emma she sees she she really she, just just seconds ago she she was she was horrified that now you know, it, it would actually, it would all come true, all these, all these fears and rumors and threats of these awful foreign soldiers coming and raping women and possibly killing them too, and, and just suddenly that's, that's not the reality to her anymore, and, and she, she tries to escape too, and then the, the, the other three come in and, and bring with them the, the atmosphere of the tank. And it is it is as ugly and unpleasant and even even when War Daddy tries to maintain you know some sort of, you know he, he he tells you know don't touch Emma and then you know the big guy goes over and licks her food and then what well, I didn't touch her you know and, and War Daddy still no nope, we can we can swap and and just yeah the the whole yeah, it was, it was, and, you know, and, and they, they go, you know, into the bedroom by themselves, and, and also just these tiny little gestures and looks, you know, when, when Emma comes out and her cousin, there's, there's this tiny little bit of just, like, you know, any judgment or something, she, she, you know, she's not married to him, and, you know, he's, 
he's technically, you know, from he's he's an he's one of the enemy forces, so he shouldn't really, but you know, and just these these subtle little things in, and and you know, once when the when the Renee goes and and Norman runs over to Emma, we you know we also again see see the piano and it's sort of just yeah the this this beautiful thing that the two of them share briefly is yeah and i suppose that more or less covers that scene but yeah also just the emma's acting of every every little you know the the anxiety in her at first the relief when when she you know, really, you know, when when he starts playing the piano, the the joy in her when she sings, and then the the terror when when the other three come up, and and then suddenly, suddenly, it is just as ugly and unpleasant. It, suddenly, this this fear of the the ugly soldier that that comes and destroys suddenly that's real again, and and we and War Daddy don't know what exactly they're what are they going to do and what. And and just yeah, I, I I mean this woman had maybe ten minutes of screen time and just just yeah dagger in my heart and um, I think that that covers that. I also wanted to talk about the the development of of the you know. The, the the tight bond. I mean, we we don't really we don't see or know red, but we when we first see him and and the others, you know the I I think it's the I think it's the big one. Gordo Gordo is that maybe his name? You know the yeah I'm gonna go with Gordo. It's like still clutching. Clutching Red's hand, he's excuse me. He, he can't he can't let go. Literally, he he just excuse me. You know it. That's because this guy, several years together, and suddenly, and it's you know, and, and and War Daddy blames himself for you know, you know because he couldn't protect him, and. You know, from from that, and then you know they drive in, and then they they take down his body, and and very carefully, and and just then, you know, it, just then it hits me. He's been in the tank with them since he died, and it might have been hours, and they you know they're sitting, you know, some, at least one of them might be sitting right up against him as as he lays there bloody and dead and just and and they they very carefully take him down and and it's like do, do you think to, will, will they get him all the way home to, to bury him properly and and then we the 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 little bit that's left of red when when Norman goes in to to clean and and you know we see a lot of, of fresh blood which again really confirms, you know, it, it was it was very recently that he died, and there's a lot of blood, and then there there's part of his face, and and Norman just barely gets that out before before he throws up, and it just, and that was the reality. That was that was what, that's what war looks like, and. Yeah, and and with that, I I will talk about Norman's. You know, yeah, where how he starts and how he becomes, yeah, how the development of his relationship with with the others. You know, coming in as this, you know, not, yeah, not not at all accustomed to even even being in the you know this so so close to enemy territory, you know, deep in enemy territory even. And just, yeah, you know, he's he was meant to type. That's that's what he, you know, he didn't go to tank school, and suddenly he has to shoot at 
seemingly possibly dead people, he has to shoot children. And, and a war daddy breaks him. I'm, I'm not going to go into detail about that as I did in the review. And I would just be repeating myself. But there's this, you know, afterwards, he does... He, he is more comfortable with it, but at the same time, he is still a human being, you know, when, and, and again, this, you know, when, when he fires the machine gun and cries, die Nazis, you know, it's again, it's this, it's this explosion of anxiety and just, yeah, it's, it's not some kind of, it's, it's just this, this relief is, and, and then survivors killed of, of having, gotten through it, having it still being alive, you know, having having survived a life or death you know, situation, having having come out on top, and you know, and, and I mean, early on, he's even saying, you know, I I I can't be here, I can't stand this, just just kill me, and the yeah, the only way he he stays is breaking. They, you know, you, you can't be a human being in that situation. You have to, you have to pull away from that. And that's where, you know, Norman and War Daddy try to maintain some, you know, humanity where, where the others kind of say, we, we have to be very sparse with that. We, we, you know, and... Yeah, the the way you know when when they first meet him, it's and and that's you know it's very macho culture. The very first time they meet him, they're like, not even, yeah, you know what what are you doing here? You don't belong here. And you know, grabbing his things and yeah, and then over the course of it, they do get to, you know, yeah, they over the course of the film, they they. He becomes another member of the crew. He is not just, he's not the new guy anymore. He is a member of the crew. And the the various jokes they make and such, you know, with with Bible being, you know, so so Christian and all these things with the Yeah, the the you know, and then they make jokes about you know, would would Hitler be saying that? You know, and it was would Hitler screw us for a pack of cigarettes? You know, yeah, the, just and and that again is you know, to them Hitler is this one man who's responsible for millions of Germans killing their friends and family and threatening to kill them. You know, threatening to kill friends, and family, and kill them and they have to make jokes about Hitler, otherwise they're just not going to get through the day. Because the, the sheer horror of this reality would be overwhelming if, if they didn't do that. And, and the movie treads this balance perfectly of making fun of, of these things. You know, it's kind of, you know, this, this making it tolerable. These, with these jokes and such, and still being, you know, very, I don't know if authentic is the word, you know, not, it doesn't become celebratory. I, I've seen some reviewers say that it celebrates the, you know, the, the, the rage and the bloodshed and such, and, I completely disagree. I, I, there, yeah, I, I've already described my view on it. And yeah, it would be so easy. There are so many movies that just go for that easy, you know, very, very straight and comfortable, you know, but, but yeah, this just, this is as, ugly and unpleasant as, and, and just barely tolerable, just barely tolerable as war. 
and that is, you know, that is in part also why the ending needed to be something, you know, it couldn't just kind of stop. There, there did need to be something there at the end. I, but, but I mean, I, I think the tiger attack would have been a good play. You know, have have them just barely take out the tiger as they do in the current form, and then afterwards something, you know, else. Yeah, but but not. Yeah, I, I think that might more or less cover it. I, I I liked all of the you know the the main character all the characters in general. I I felt like they really did nice on defining and and just, these are kind of archetypes, but you still you get to know these different guys in, you know, and, and can tell them apart, and, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's a real feat to make something like this, you know, I mean, on, on the one hand, because so much of it is just this one tank and this one very narrow perspective of this major war, on one hand not boring or repetitive, at the same time not like just completely overpowering because of how much ugliness there is, and yeah, giving, giving these characters, you know, yeah, making them human beings just a lot of the time these these human traits are very subdued or they are perverted into something nasty so they you know they're they're making fun of how easy it is to buy sex from from one of these poor women they are they're you know yeah it's it's because they have to because if they don't make a joke about it then they have to face the reality that all of these Poor German women, you know, I mean, some some may never even, you know, some are just straight up, some are raped without any, you know, and, and what, what can they do? The, the other guy has a gun and, you know, and some, some of them have, some of them make the choice that if they can just get just a little bit of, of, you know, some, some, you know, maybe food or something. If that, that would, that would be worth it to them. It, and at the same time, you know, with, with, and, and back then, the, the, the view on women, female sexuality, and, and on the purity of a woman, as, as if her having sex is is somehow going to make her damaged goods it's 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 an awful thing to, to have to think about and and it's it's just a day-to-day -day reality it's not like they can pretend that they and the other and, and at the same you know yeah it's not like they can pretend that like the other guys in in just their like platoon or, or whatever it's called, you know, or just other places around the country aren't having sex with with these women, you know, and and at the same time they they themselves probably are as well because there is just some on on you know they they just they have to have something something positive something. You know, and and that is you know just getting getting into just pure technical terms and and such. You know, when when you are extremely anxious, you also you know become extremely sexual because the the anxiety activate. You know, you, when when your body thinks you're gonna die soon, it tells you you better reproduce right now. And when you just stay anxious for a long time, then you keep wanting some kind of sexual, yeah. And the, 
I suppose that was about what I wanted to say about. I do want to say about the ending that I I appreciate that it didn't I appreciate that it still stayed somewhat realistic. I mean basically suddenly the Germans had forgotten what tactics were. You know, that's that's about it. But but other than that, you know, they were running out of submachine gun ammo and you know, they only had so many shells and grenades and, and such, you know, that that all still worked. I quite appreciate that they didn't just go, like, full Hollywood and, like, you know. And I like that, you know, after all that, excuse me, after all they've gone through in the whole film, it's a mine. It's, it's, that's it. You know, they, they, the, the tank hits a mine and, and, you know, the, the tread comes off and, yeah, with, with SS on the way, there's no way they're going to be able to fix it in time. And with the tank tread having come off, like, it's, you know, the, the tank is now just a big, heavy cannon. It is no longer a vehicle. There's, there's no, you know, that's, that's also part of what this, another aspect of this, the, the, the tanks, you know, and not, not even just the Sherman tank, but, but tanks in general. They are just very, you know, when, yeah, when we're talking whether or not they can drive, they are extremely fragile. They are just, yeah, it, it doesn't take much to stop one from moving and, Again, you know, how, how many times have we seen in movies where it's just, you know, a bigger explosion or some, something? Like that? It's too rare that we see it's it's just the tank tread that, that falls off because that's that's enough. That, yeah, you, you know, you can't just, just like that, fix that. So, so that's, yeah. I did want to say when you know during the Emma scene when when Brad Pitt takes off his shirt and we see the the scars on his back is also very very compelling and it's just yeah you know he doesn't even he doesn't even really like I mean he he notices the the others looking at him and it's just there's there's not even like a a shyness or or any kind of and he doesn't he doesn't give off any explanation it's just they're there and and that's just that's that's just it the 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 scars are there and you run out of effort for explaining or for saying it's it's from this or that you know uh, or or being like you know upset at someone else seeing them for the first time or it's just yeah, and I I think that covers everything. Just briefly on on also the ending when when Norman escapes through the 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 hatch at the bottom and the the young SS you know shines a light at him and then you know he he definitely sees Norman there and then he goes about, you know, he, he pretends there isn't any, you know, pretends there isn't anyone down there. And it's kind of like he is like Norman was at the beginning of the film. You know, he doesn't, or, or maybe he just genuinely doesn't want that to, you know, you know, whether it's from like a lack of experience or whatever, he, he spares Norman and when you know the, the the very end when when we just see the you know he's he's sitting there ready to ready to fire and they you know they open and it's it's Americans you know, just, you know and and they get him 
out of there, and you know these these field medics, you know, take him down. You know, so can, can I just? Yeah, I should take this from you. Oh, it's okay. You can keep it. You know, just and and Norman doesn't, and we don't really register what's going on because it's it was just this overpowering just noise and and just death and destruction and suddenly everything's okay again and that's just does not compute so so they're just and they get it the field medics aren't like what, what's wrong with you it's just no they 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 get it they're they're taking him down and and at first they're like we should probably get that gun out of his hand because he might he might lose it and and shoot someone possibly himself so so we should probably get it out but then when you know when the guy realizes oh he's he's not letting go then it's you know comf you know just just sort of you know soothing We're just you know it's okay you keep keep the gun and you know you know help helps him up into into the 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 you know vehicle and and you know you know you're a hero and and the door slams and and he drives away and it's still just not even really registering it's just it's 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 just you know it, it will eventually maybe but not not yet and and he drives away and the the closing you know the, this pull out and and the and then the 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 end credits with with all this footage from back then and these these nicely edited you know you have you have an officer giving candy to to a kid you know you have Hitler giving a speech you have you know marching this it it just it captures so much in in such a short amount of time and just yeah, it's 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 a stunning film, and I am I am really glad that some movies like this are being made, and that David Ayer is you know yeah I'm I'm very happy to see that he can so do so well with something that is not at all like you know I mean. Other than the, the sort of macho culture and the fatalism, you know, yeah, this, other than that, this is completely different from his L.A. crime films. And, you know, it's, it's a period piece. It's, excuse me, they're very, yeah, and, and just, he, he does amazing with it. And I... I mean, I'm, I'm not sure what would be a good place to go next with that, but if he thinks of one, I would be very happy. I, before he made End of Watch, I had not at all thought of you know him him doing what he does, but doing it with with POV. So so yeah, I'm sure there's there are more very interesting places to to go with this, and I. I can't wait to see him. I just, the the man continues to astound me. Please rate and comment and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.